It began when a mother saw the glow from a cell phone screen underneath her 11 year old daughter's bedroom door. It was late on a school night. And she was naked from the waist down with her phone on and she was recording. She asked us not to show her face to protect her daughter's identity. And I just saw message after message and video after video she was sending. The victim's mother says she and her husband regularly checked their daughter's phone. But her daughter's predator used a messaging app called Kick. She'd never heard of it, and she kept it hidden in a folder with other apps. It just started like, you know, send me a picture of you. I want to see what you look like. And then he would say, you know, how about a little lower? She thought she was sending the images to another 11-year-old girl. and She thought she had a crush on her. Instead, it was a 50-year-old businessman in Clayton. He was pretty clever. He was sending her live videos of another child about her age. He had her tie herself up. Awful, awful things that no one, you know, as a parent wants to see their child doing, let alone them being asked to do. Cases like this are exploding in the St. Louis area, according to Nathan yeah, Chapman with the U.S. Attorney's Office in St. Louis. Our office has had about a 50 percent increase in cases from the previous uh, two years. And then just nationally, um, all offices, districts, the, the numbers are going up. Federal prosecutors have indicted 314 predators on charges related to child sexual abuse material in the past five years. Predators like Ivy Harold Baxter Jr., Jason Fine, and Ashu Joshi. The feds say the problem isn't getting convictions. It's keeping up. The U.S. Attorney's Office has hired another full-time prosecutor to handle child sexual abuse image cases. With so many more kids having cell phones, all it takes is an internet connection and one social media app, and, uh, and then it's out there. The most recent stats from the FBI St. Louis Division show that between January of 2019 and March of this year, the division opened more than 400 new investigations concerning crimes against children, and about 91 percent of those investigations involved online child sexual abuse material. Online predators use several tactics. One is called sextortion, threatening to send images to a victim's loved ones if they don't send more or send money. FBI Assistant Special Agent Chris Cracker says sextortion threats are often empty. So we've seen over a dozen cases of teenage boys committing suicide directly following these incidents. The likelihood of that information being, ever being released to anyone is, is basically non-existent. They're just trying to get a quick payment, and if you don't comply, they'll just move on to the next person. Other tactics include arranging in-person meetings and building their own collections of images that they can trade for money. The appetite for this stuff is so strong, I don't necessarily see it ever stopping. Meanwhile, prosecutors say parents should not freak out, not panic, but Make sure that your child is comfortable coming to you to tell that to tell you that the victim's mother says they responded too harshly at first, punishing their daughter. They realized supporting her is the best solution. She's a shell of what she was like this happy girl that we knew that was full of a sense of humor. We get glimpses of her sometimes, but it's, you know, very rarely. The feds also say neither parents nor their children will be prosecuted for images kids send of themselves. They say going to investigators immediately can help stop enticement from happening to another child. For the I-Team, Christine Byers, five on your side.